word has gotten around. So crop insurance, revenue insurance is number one. Now, do we provide a shallow loss program on top of crop insurance? Do we use the money from the direct payment, the decoupled payment, to fund it? So you take out crop insurance, the government puts an increment on top of it. Or you go the other route called systemic risk or catastrophic program. The government fund a, funds a catastrophic event like the drought in Texas and Oklahoma. And then you buy crop insurance on top of that. And frankly, the question becomes, how much funding of risk by the government is too much? <coughs> Target press. I thought we had finally learned that that program didn't work. But no, we're talking about it again. <coughs> The target price program is half-baked and exactly backwards. We have a drought across the country, we're in trouble. We don't have anything to sell, prices go above target, and we don't get a payment. Or you go the other way, we have an excellent crop, you got something to sell, you got a crack at making some money, price falls below target, and you get a payment. It's backwards. You have to target revenue if it's going to work. Now, do you do it on planted acres or on the base? Do you target the state or the county or the crop reporting district? <clears throat> or do you go farm by farm? The closer you get to the farm with the risk protection program, the more you distort the market <clears throat> and the more problems we have with the WTO. We will get a farm bill. It may actually be better than what we got now. The question is when? No later than April the 13th. Now there's a few other issues that we should talk about and then we'll field some questions. Positive proof of global warming. <laughs> now, Emerson and I remember this. <laughs> I hear this is Bill Clinton. <laughs> and that's Tiger Woods. <laughs> they have similar problems. <laughs> and you know who their advisor is? Newt. <laughs> He's on number three now. <laughs> if I was her, I'd worry. Number four may be around. <laughs> Is climate change for real or a hoax? What are the facts? The Earth has warmed one degree in the last 50 years. That's documented. Is that abnormal? Not if you go back to 1500. There's evidence there was global warming in 1500. What's causing it? Fossil fuel? I don't think we know for sure. We tried to pass cap and trade. We tried to solve a problem before we got it defined. It didn't work. Now, if the Earth warms one degree, in the next 50 years, we got problems. So Prudence would say that you study this and see if you can discover what the problem is, what the solution is, etc. The urban press just loves to bad mouth ethanol. They spread this mythology. 40% of the corn crop goes for ethanol. That's just plain 
same boat. The way they get that 40% is they ignore the fact that we feed the protein. Distiller, dried, grain. Now I tell my friends in the cattle industry, get over it. We are gonna produce renewable fuel. And it's not food versus fuel. Talk to the plant breeders at DuPont or San Gentil or Monsanto or Bear. They'll look at you and smile and say by 2030 we'll be producing 300 bushels of corn to the acre on 10 inches of rain. Food and fuel. Renewable fuels is a national security issue. Who's the biggest user of renewable fuels? The Pentagon. Their goal is 50% of their fuel by 2025 20, will come from renewable sources. They understand it. They understand what will happen if those nuts in Iran blow up a ship in the Strait of Hormuz. All in the name of Allah. We're over there now with an aircraft carrier and we're playing chicken. The day is over when we can rely on the Middle East and Venezuela for our fuel. And yes, we need to build the pipeline. I don't know where, but we need to build it. It's a national security issue. Demographers say by 2050 there will be three and a half billion more people to feed. Agriculture productivity around the world is increasing about one and three quarters percent per year. That's adequate. But we've got to continue that. Now every now and then I run into somebody that's anti-biotechnology. Franken Foods. A third of the world's people, when they go to bed tonight, aren't sure they'll be breakfast. Now, we're fat and happy. Some of those African countries, they won't allow BT corn in there. It says it'll kill them. Hell, they're going to die anyhow if they don't get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do sound science. Invest in the future. Now, I always clear my stories with the people in charge. You met the chairman of the board and the president. And you know Nate, and they all cleared this story. <coughs> It was on C-SPAN, so it has to be okay. <laughs> the man by the name of Norm Ormstein, he's a character, he runs the American Enterprise Institute, and he told this story the other night. And it fits what I've been saying for the past 50 minutes. This professor would go into class every morning and he would say, question of the day. And the students then responded. So he walked in this one morning and he said, question of the day. What organ of the body, when stimulated, expands eight times? Miss Jones, what's the answer? I wouldn't think of answering that question. That's terrible. Mr. Smith, what's the answer? Mr. Smith said, the pupil of your eye. Correct, Mr. Smith. Now, Miss Jones, you didn't do your homework, you got a dirty mind, and you're destined to live a life of unfulfilled expectations. <laughs> I've never told my wife that story. 